all choir members to come up, if you would. You might help us out in the choir this morning. We would appreciate that. Page number 76. Let's all stand while we sing all three verses. Yeah. 
he alone can give new life, gladly he will give. Jesus spoke to me, Jesus spoke to me, I was lost, sin's dark sea, he said he gave his life to set me free. I'm glad I heard my Savior speak to me. Amen. No about you, Brother Dustin. I felt something on that scene. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad Jesus spoke to you? Amen. I'm glad I'll never forget the day he spoke to my heart. And uh, called me to be saved. And I pray that you can feel him speaking to you. How felt him speak to you. If you haven't, today's a good day to hear his voice. That's Amen. Right. Just listen and he'll speak to you today. Amen. Good to see you in the Lord's house this morning. It's good to start off with that good praise and worship song. And I'm uh, looking forward to a good, a good service of worshiping the, the Father today. Uh, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Asking him to touch uh, many prayer requests. There's a lot of people that need, need prayer. Uh, Please remember Walter Hampton family, a uh, young man from Heard County passed away from COVID. Uh, Angela Yarber family, she has been fighting COVID battle for quite some time, a couple, three months, and passed away. Uh, pray for Amy Swafford and Terry Holloway and Greg Danny, Denny, all who are fighting COVID right now. Pray for them. Any others this morning? Grace and TJ Yarber got COVID as well. That's right. Let's pray for them. Wiley, Wileen Underwood. Okay, let's remember that one. Any others this morning? Okay, little Miss Haven's having surgery. Let's pray for her. Amen. Bernice. You continue to remember Miss Bernice and her family and I uh, appreciate that. Miss Bernice, we, we didn't do that to get a thank you. We did that because we love you and love Brother Bill. Amen. And uh, we're, we're going to be remembering him uh, long into the future. Any others this morning? Is that Emmett? Okay. Let's remember your Brother Emmett. Brother Alex, yes. Okay. Let's remember. Okay. Let's remember Miss Katie this morning. Amen. Amen. Any others? All right. If not, let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time, asking him to touch the service and especially touch these requests that made. Brother Randall, let's me take us to the Lord in prayer. Yes. Yes. Amen. Thank you, brother. Brother Tyson, where are you at? Right there. All right, give us a Sunday school report. Tyson. 
great, great number this morning uh, for a fall break uh, weekend for Sunday school. Thank you for being a part of that. If you weren't a part of Sunday school, I encourage you to get involved, and uh, I promise you, you won't be sorry of it. We have some beautiful flowers here this morning that's been placed on the on the communion table, and uh, they've been placed there in memory of Gary E. Wiggins, Suzanne Marie Wiggins, Gordon and Capitola Rollins, Gene and Opal Wiggins, Ray Caldwell, and Donald Gordon. So we appreciate Miss Phyllis and uh, her family placing those flowers there today. But they're placed there in memory of those names that I just uh, just mentioned. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> if you got your your bulletin this morning, I'm not going to try to take up a whole lot of time. There are a lot of a lot of things in there that we need to, to look at. I want to let you look at them. Make sure you get them. If you haven't got a bulletin, there's some in the back, I'm sure, or some back here in the foyer. Uh, get them. Uh, I was just blown away when I got here this morning, and uh, my heart has been focused toward worship today, and worshiping the Lord. And I saw what was on the front of our bulletin. And I, I promise you that was not a coincidence. Amen. Amen. It says, I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty. And uh, I was just thinking about how awesome our God was this yes. morning and how right. majestic he yeah. is and how wonderful he is. And I went, I, I encourage you to do this. I'm not going to do it for the sake of time this morning. You go to Psalms 145. That's where that comes from, Psalms 145, 5. You go and read that today. And if you can't get happy about what God has done for you and who God is to you today, I'm telling you, something's wrong. But he just uh, spoke to my heart. I appreciate uh, those words this morning. But on the inside of your, your book, in this morning, a lot of uh, uh, announcements. Uh, they're on a flyer here. You got an extra flyer on, on top of your prayer book, a uh, prayer request. Remember them. Just one I want to want to mention that men's fellowship trip. We're going to Moultrie to that Sunbelt Ag Expo. That's October the 21st. We're leaving on a th uh, Thursday, October 21st. Listen, we're going to leave at 5 a.m. that morning. Okay? I know that's that's early. But uh, we're going to get down there about the time they open. We're going to take the bus. So we're going to leave the church from 5 a.m. Men, it does cost 10 bucks per piece to get, to get in. So make sure you remember that and all you can eat uh, while you're there. Uh, we're going to have a sign-up sheet. I'm going to put these sign-up sheets in the back today. Uh, you can sign up. You don't, if you don't get signed up and decide you want to go, that's fine. I just kind of want to have a head count of how many we got going. So... Uh, that trip, be, be much in prayer for it, and uh, I encourage you to go. Uh, go ahead and clear off your calendar of that day and spend some time fellowshipping with the Lord and looking at a lot of amazing stuff down there. Got Fall Festival coming up the 24th. That's a Sunday the 24th at 6 p.m. Uh, got a lot of fun food games. We'll have a chili cook-off like we always do. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on that day. That will be a Sunday afternoon, uh, so looking forward to that. A lot of stuff going on today. Uh, we will have a, a, our, our we will have our writ, original service. Then afterwards, we're going to have a short conference. We need to bring up a couple of things. Main thing being to elect delegates to go to our uh, associational meeting, annual meeting next week at Root for Road Baptist Church, where we will be taking the backpacks for Appalachia. So if they are due here today, if you did not get your backpack in, please get him them here ASAP. I have to turn in those numbers, and we'll take them up with us next week. So make sure you get those in. Amen. Amen. Ain't God good this morning? Amen. One more. I forgot. Apple trip coming up. Senior apple trip. We're going to be taking an apple trip to get uh, apples for our seniors. Uh, you can get apples. They got pork skins. I like them real good. Fried peanuts. Uh, just about anything you can find in North Georgia. We're going to leave here at 845. Uh, Listen, that's for seniors and uh, seniors at heart, okay? You don't have to be in that age group. If you decide you want to go, you don't have anything to do that day, load up and go with us. We'll have a wonderful time. Amen. All right. Let's worship God this morning. Amen. Listen, if we do anything else today, let's worship God. He's worthy to be praised this morning. And uh, I just the, the Bible says this in in Psalms chapter twenty two verse three. He says, "God inhabits the praise of His people." Yes. We want God to show up this morning, worship Him, worship Him in song this morning, Amen. Amen. Worship Him in all that we do, and let's worship Him as we hear the words spoken to our hearts this morning. 
And let's leave out of here on fire for God today. Amen. He can do that for us today. Let's worship. Brother Tony, come on back. Pastor Appreciation Lunch next week uh, after the service, okay? All that's in the in the thing as well. See, it's good to see Miss Sherry back with us today. I'm proud that they got her situated. Amen. With her medical issues she had going on right there, it was she couldn't stand up. She was falling over for a while. And they couldn't get her blood pressure regulated. So we just praise the Lord for everything, right, Miss Sherry? It was, it was good that it was to the point where she could get help, all right? <laughs> so that was a good thing. Turn to page number 110 and sing all three verses. <laughs> Some bad morning we shall see Jesus in What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise, heading for that jubilee yonder in the sky. Birthdays and anniversaries. We need to celebrate. Sing to you. Nobody. All right. I know I said probably two or three times, but I encourage anybody that will to help us out in the choir. <laughs> Ask anybody that had a birthday anniversary to come up, and we want to sing. Yeah. Now, who had the anniversary? You gonna tell on anybody? This anniversary? Amen. All right, I'm going to be sure now. All right, let's all stand and sing happy birthday, then we'll sing happy anniversary. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. And many more. All right. That's the way it works.
page 67, we'll get them in. When y'all start, ladies, when y'all start, I'll get to those parts. Say and encourage anybody that would to help us out in the choir. If you're used to singing in the choir and you're not up here, that invitation is for you and then anybody else that we don't have tryouts, okay? And we don't have to buy robes. Now I might get more up here for say we're gonna we're gonna dress in robes, right? Everybody wants that robe. Encourage you to help us out in the choir and I've been contemplating a little bit. I, I don't know, usually around Christmas time we try to do something special with the choir, but we haven't been able to schedule any type of choir practice or anything, but if anybody has interest, whether it be out here, anybody that's in the choir up here, if have interest actually in doing anything for Christmas, let me know, and then we'll have to schedule choir practice. So, Or if we don't do that, we're probably just going to do some specials. Each person that does specials in the church, ask them to sing maybe you know, like one special night or whatever it may be. But I encourage you to help us out with that. If you have any interest in doing something over Christmas, let us know. We're probably going to sing Midnight Cry this morning. Y'all worship with Closer now. 
have a special this morning. Miss Autumn and Miss Valeria are going to sing for us this morning. Amen. Pray for them as they sing. of weary is your burden weighing heavy is it all too much to carry let me tell you about my jesus if you feel that empty feeling because shame's done all this stealing and you're desperate for some healing let me tell you about my jesus he makes a way when there ain't no way Rises up from an empty grave Ain't no sinner that he can't save Let me tell you about my Jesus His love is strong and His grace is free And the good news is I know that He can do for you what He's done for me so Let me tell you about my Jesus And let my Jesus change your life Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, amen. Wipe away the tears from broken dreams and wasted hears until the past to disappear. Oh, let me tell you about my Jesus and all the wrong turns that you would go and on to if you could. You could work it all for your good. Let me tell you about my Jesus He makes a way when there ain't no way Rises up from an empty grave Ain't no sinner that He can save Let me tell you about my Jesus His love is strong and His grace is free And the good news is I know that He can do for you what He's done for me Let me tell you about my Jesus let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 Take my cross to Calvary. Pay the price for all my guilty. Do you care that much about me? Let me tell you about my Jesus, oh. He makes a way when there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what you call using your voice for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Boy, what a blessing this morning. Amen. <laughs> the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. Right. Amen. That's what them two little girls just did here this morning. Amen. They sang about right. Jesus. And, uh, right. as they were singing a lot what that song said. It says, his love is strong and his grace is free. 
Aren't you glad it's free this morning? Amen. Aren't you glad you didn't have to do anything to deserve it? Listen, we don't deserve salvation this morning, but he gives it to us graciously out of his love and out of his mercy. He pours it out to all of us that will receive it this morning. And uh, I pray that all of us in this place this morning know Jesus. And when that midnight cry that the choir sing about comes about, about we'll all be going to, the, to heaven together. But it's just about a, a, odds are that in a crowd this big, there's somebody here that doesn't know him this morning. Amen. Listen, I want you to know something. If you've never asked Jesus to save your soul, to come and wash your sins away, listen, today is the best day that has ever been for that to happen. Listen, don't wait too long. That midnight cry is coming. That's not just something we sing about. That is reality. It's going to happen. And uh, he's going to call us all home someday, soon, really soon. This thing's drawing to an end. The, the, the world events are setting up for the seven-year tribulation period. Uh, uh, the Antichrist is probably somewhere walking and living in this world right now, just waiting to be revealed. And the only thing that's stopping that from happening is the church going up. Amen? Right. Yeah, and listen, the only thing that's stopping the church going up is there's some more folks need to get into church before we leave this place amen and uh, you may be one of them i want you to talk i want i want you this morning to to pray if you if you've never done that just let god speak to your heart this morning and let god let god speak to you and let him save you this morning amen we're singing that song midnight cry that bible, bible says in the moment in the twinkling of an eye we shall all be changed and uh, I, I was thinking about that being changed. Amen. I can't wait until I'm changed, yeah. Brother Tony. Amen. I need to be changed yeah. this morning. Listen, uh, when I was saved, I was changed on the inside. Amen. Right. I ain't the same as I used to be. Amen. Right. And listen, I, 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 I still ain't no good, but I ain't what I used to be. Yeah. I'm a little better than I used to be. Amen. Not because of anything I've done, but because of everything that he's done on the inside. Right. Listen, when that, when that, uh, when that, Shout comes from heaven. I'm going to be changed on the outside too. Amen. Listen, all this old flesh that, that weighs me down, that, that distresses me, that, that discourages me, that, that temptation comes and takes a hold of, it's going to be changed. It's going to be made perfect. Amen. And I can't wait for that day. I'm wanting to be perfect. Amen. I pray that you're wanting to be perfect. And I'm looking forward to that day. I, I can't wait to, to hear that call. But I, it would break my heart this morning to know that he would call before somebody in this church would be saved. So I, I encourage you this morning, listen to the Lord. I, I just tell you, the Lord's just, just amazed me today. His presence has been in this place. If you got your Bible, let's turn to Psalms chapter 95. I told you as, uh, before I got here this morning, my, uh, this, this week, my heart's just been moved toward praise and toward worship. Now, I want to worship him this morning. It means he's worthy. I looked up that word worship. It means the feeling or expression of reverence or an adoration for God. Can I just tell you this morning? I want you to know I love the Lord this morning. Amen. Uh, because of what all he's done for me. He has done so many things for me. But I don't love him just because of what he's done for me. I love him because of who he is to me this morning. Amen. And I want to give him worship this morning because he's good. Because he's been faithful. Because he's always been there. And in a time where it seems hard to worship. Because when we look around us. And we see all that's going on in the world. And we see the, uh, all the things that, that are taking place. It's sometimes hard to worship. And I want you to know that worship can take place no matter where you're at this morning. No matter what you're going through. Worship can take place. And when worship takes place, God shows up. Amen. My prayer this morning is God would show up in our, in our midst and change our hearts and change our lives this morning. Psalms chapter 95. Let's stand to our feet this morning. I'm going to read just seven verses. The Bible says this, O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before His presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. And listen, if you can't sing like me this morning, that's all you got to do is make a joyful noise. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. You ain't got to sing good to, to, to be able to worship God. You just got to make that joyful sound right. come, out of your, come out of your lungs. The Bible says in verse 3, For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In His hands are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is His also. 
the sea is his, and he, and he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you'll hear his voice, let's pray. Lord, I love you today, God. I thank you for your presence that I feel in this place. Lord, I just want to worship you today, God, in all that we do. I pray that this preaching time would be a time of worship, God. I pray that our hearts would be turned towards you, uh, to worship you for all that you are, not just for what you've done, but all that you, you are to us this morning. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, let us block out everything that's, that's on the outside, and Lord, let us just see you. Lord, if we look at this world, we'll be discouraged and upset. Lord, when we look at you, we'll be encouraged, and Lord, uh, excited and joyful about what you what what our future is this morning and i ask you to lead and guide and direct us lord i pray that you speak to that heart that may be lost here this morning lord just just share the gospel with them lord and just let jesus be preached lord and lord just use the words that's going to be said lord to to speak to their heart lord i pray that you guide us and i pray that you lead us lord i don't want to go anywhere that you don't want to go this morning god lord i submit to you and i give myself to you lord and i ask you to use me god Holy Spirit, just do your work today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to preach on this thought this morning. If I can get it out, praise God. Oh, praise His holy name. Amen. I want to sing this song. Oh, let us praise Him. Oh, let us praise Him. My prayer and my desire for us as we come in this place this morning is us to do that, to praise Him. Just to worship Him. Listen, God's been so good to us today. Amen. We can look around and see all the things wrong, but if we look at him, we can just see how good he is, and he's worthy of our praise this morning. Listen, I know it's easy to look around and see all the, uh, the heartache that's going on. I know that it's easy to look around and see all the sick people and see the people that, that's lost loved ones and, 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 and are heartbroken this morning. Now, I didn't mean, I didn't say that just for the Alabama and Auburn fans this morning, amen? <laughs> That was too soon, wasn't it? <laughs> Lord, forgive me. Now, uh, in all seriousness, though, there are people all over this land that's heartbroken this morning. Really, things in their life have, have fallen apart. Uh, their, their 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 relationships are on the rocks. Uh, their their children have gone astray. Their loved ones are gone and gone on to be with the Lord, and they're left here alone, and they're heartbroken. I want you to know, sometimes it's hard to worship when you're heartbroken. When, when, the, when, when the world seems like it's crumbled down on top of you and the weight of everything that, that is going on around us crumbles down on top of us, the, the very last thing that we can seem to do is to worship. But let me tell you this, the very thing that we ought to do in those times more than anything else is worship. Listen, if we want our, our spirits lifted, if we want to be encouraged down deep in our heart, the first thing we've got to do is just worship God because God is God this morning. Amen? Listen, I know that so many times it's, it's hard to do that. Uh, but listen, when you just start looking at God, looking at who He is, it comes real easy to worship. Amen? The problem is we don't get our eyes on Him enough. Amen. We look on everything else. We look at our problems. We look at all that we have to do. And we look at all the trials and the tribulations. And we look at all that. And, and, and it causes us to have a damper on our spirit. But when you just let all that fade away and you look right into, in, into the throne of glory this morning. Hey, listen, it's easy to praise. Amen. Right. It's easy to say, God, you're worthy. God, you're good. God, you love me this morning. I don't know why you would, but you do. So I give you praise and I give you honor. And the Bible and the psalmist is, is encouraging us to do that this morning. He says, oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Amen. Let us praise Him. I, I feel this from the first song that we've sang in this church this morning. There was praise going up. Amen. I'm talking about uh, just, just singing unto Him this morning. There was praise going up to His name. And that's good this morning. That's what we, we, we are, are after this morning is to praise Him. Just to praise Him. It's easy to praise when things are going good, amen? When things are good. Listen, I, I'll be honest with you. It's easy after going through COVID to look over here 
at 99 in Sunday school and say, Woo -hoo -hoo. Listen, back before COVID, we'd have turned a backflip for 99 people in Sunday school. Amen. Just look what God has done. It's easy to praise when it's like that. And listen, we ought to because a lot of times when things are going good, that's when we forget the most to praise them. Amen. We just think, boy, everything's rocking and rolling, going good. Listen, the, the reason it is is because God has been so good to us. And God is blessing. And God is pouring out his blessing. And I say this, God's blessed this church. And listen, God has blessed us individually this morning. If you're here this morning, God has blessed you. Do we all have problems? Absolutely we all got problems. I saw something kind of funny last night. I was, I was looking at, at, down Facebook. I do sometimes. And somebody had posted something. There's these two little monkeys. Picture, a picture of two little monkeys. Some of y'all probably saw it. And look, one of the little monkeys said, they told us that we could, didn't know if it would be good for eight of us to get together uh, without having an issue or without issues. And that other little monkey looked at it and said, I don't know if I know eight people that don't have issues. Amen? <laughs> <laughs> we all got some issues. Amen. We all got problems this morning. Uh, we all have things that we, we want better. But what can't be any better this morning is how much God loves us. Amen. Listen, he loves us just as much at our lowest point as he does when we're walking just as close to us. Listen, you can't love him any more. He can't love us any more or any less. That's just how much God is. And that's how God does things. And so, listen, this morning, we ought to be thankful that we, we serve a God like that. We say, thank you, Lord, for your goodness. And thank you for your mercy. But it's easy to... Praise God when everything's going good. And we ought to praise God when everything's going good. The Bible says, Matthew chapter 12, verse 34, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. When God's been good to you and filled your heart up, your mouth ought to speak it out. That's kind of what those little girls were doing up here a while ago, amen? Listen, you go hear their, their testimony, and they'll tell you what Jesus has done for them. And they just want to tell somebody, Jesus has filled their heart up. And out of their heart, came the abundance of their mouth. What God has done inside their heart is, is what he's done in their mouth. It came out of their mouth. Uh, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever is our heart's full of is what our mouth's going to speak of. Amen? Uh, we, we do a, a little bit of a, we call them icebreakers at teen camp. And uh, we get them together. And it's all just to break the ice, get everybody loosened up, get funny. Uh, and it's usually funny stuff that we do. Miss, Miss Nicole comes up with a lot of them, and she's pretty good at making them kind of icky and nasty and dirty and, and, and crazy like that, so we'll, we'll do that. But one of the ones that we do is we'll take a, an Alka-Seltzer, and we'll make those kids put that Alka-Seltzer in their mouth and take a little sip of water and see can, who can hold it in the longest. And is that, if you've ever done that before, you know what happens to an alpha seltzer. That thing starts to boil. That thing starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And sooner, and just right after they take that little sip of water, you see their mouth start poking out. They go. <laughs> and when that thing builds up so much pressure in there, they can't hold it no more. You know what happens? <laughs> it just spews out everywhere. Whoever's got the biggest compartment in there that can hold the most pressure <laughs> has got the strongest mouth usually wins. And they'll hold it long as they can. And sometimes there's so much pressure in there, it goes shooting way out there. But listen, that's how our praise ought to be. That's right. It ought to just flow out. It ought to build up because God's been so good to us. And when it gets so strong, we ought to just let it go. And I'm not just talking about in here. See, it's easy to worship in here too, right? It's easy to worship when everybody else is holding their hand up. It's easy to, listen, the easiest place, let me say this, if you can't worship in here, you will not worship anywhere. Because if you can't worship in this environment where others are encouraging it, when others are taking part in it, you won't do it anywhere else. But listen, it ain't just about worshiping and letting every, the world know how good God is to us in here. Because we all know that. We all agree on that this morning. Amen. We're all in agreement. God is good to us this morning. But who needs to hear that? Who needs to see that? Are those on the outside of these church walls that do not know that, that has never had that experience with God, and they see you praising, and they see you shouting glory in the midst of all this messed up world, and they look at you and say, there's something different about them. There's something that they got that I don't have. 
There's something in that part of that person that I want this morning. And we need to let that show forth outside these walls. Because God is good. We let it, let it spew forward this morning. But listen, like I said, it's easy to do it in here. But what about when life is falling apart? What about when life is, is coming apart at the seams? When, you're, when your marriage is on the rocks? And listen, that's a real thing. That happens to all of us at some point, sometime. We have times where our marriages get strained because of different factors in our life. Is it easy? Should we praise them? Absolutely. What about when your bank account's in the red? Amen. And it shows up and, you, and there ain't enough, there's not enough payment to go around to all the bills that come, come by. And, and we're struggling and stressing. How am I going to get all these things paid? And how am I going to get this done? And should we, and can we worship them? Absolutely we can worship them. Uh, what about when our children are acting crazy, when they get teenagers and they just lose their mind for a little while and they've gone off the deep end and we don't know if we're ever going to get them back. Listen, that happens, amen? That happens a lot. And, and, and listen, can we praise God then? Absolutely we can. What about when we've lost our job and we don't know what we're going to do? Can we praise God then? Absolutely. Listen, Brother Tyson, he encouraged my heart this morning. He came back there, and we were talking at Sunday school, and he said this. He said, you know, this week I was kind of down on myself a little bit, kind of questioning a lot of stuff. And he was thinking, why is everything so crazy in our world right now? Why is the world so crazy? Why is it so hard to understand what's going on? And Brother Tyson said this. He said, the Lord spoke to me, and he said, because we're not of this world. Christian, let me tell you something. That encouraged me this morning. You're not of this world. This world is not our home. Amen. We're just passing through. Hey, glory this morning. You know why the world don't make no sense to you today? Because this is not our place that we fit in. Amen. The Bible says he's called us out. He separated us and made us peculiar people. We're not supposed to fit in down here. Amen. Things are supposed to be weird down here. But we're supposed to influence the world that we're around. We're in the world, but not of the world. But we are to influence the world for Christ while we are here. But that's why things don't make sense. What, if the, what about when the world is falling down? Can we worship God? Absolutely. And let me say, Christian, that's when we ought to be worshiping the most. Because we can have the greatest testimony. But oftentimes, this is what happens. We let, we let our praise be conditional. We let our praise be conditional. You say, what do you mean, preacher? I mean, we let our praise be conditioned because we'll only praise when conditions are right. We'll wait till everything lines up till we had a good week, we got a raise in pay, and our children are acting right, our wife is acting right, amen, or your husband's acting right, <laughs> amen. Got a lot of amens right there. Listen, but we, we say, I'll, I'll, when, when all that happens, I'll worship God. I'll go to church and I'll shout. And let me tell you something this morning. If you wait until all that happens, you'll never shout. Amen? You'll never raise your hand. You'll never give Him glory because life just don't work like that. We don't get everything together all at the same time. The Bible says, come as you are. Amen? And as we come as we are, it says, oh, come, let us worship just like we are. No matter when it's hard, no matter when things are falling apart, we can. Don't let our praise be conditional. Don't let every, all the conditions be right because, listen, all the conditions will never get right. I was also in here this morning. I was studying this. This song had popped into my mind. And uh, then Miss Sherry, I, I was back there kind of looking over things, and I heard the, the organ playing. I thought, that's Miss Sherry. Miss Sherry's back. Amen. Praise the Lord. We've been praying for that and praying for her to get back. And I come out here. And she, the first thing she said was, don't say nothing. Amen. She thought I was going to get on her about Auburn. Amen. I said, I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> Listen. Alabama fans, Auburn fans, Georgia fans know exactly how you feel. That happens to us a lot. Amen. And we understand. It'll wear off. Amen. It'll get better. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a game. Amen. I learned that a long time ago. But Listen. I heard her out here playing, and I thought, man, that was so awesome hey. to hear her playing. And, and, and I just said, Lord, thank you for answering a prayer. 
and bringing her back to church and, and, and helping her health and, and keeping her safe. But I was sitting here and she started playing this song. And that song she started playing was God on the Mountain. Oh, the God on the mountain is still God in the valley. Yes. Listen, he's the same God when everything's going right as when everything's going wrong. He's the same God. She started playing that song right there. And I just had to bow my head and say, Lord, you're right, man. When everything's going wrong, you're still the same God. And listen, you're still working everything out for our good this morning. This world is crazy. Let me say that. But let me say this. God, at the end of this thing, Christian, we're the winners. Amen. Listen, no matter how crazy everything is, when this thing ends up, it's all working out exactly how God designed it to do before the foundation of the world. And you or I are going to be on top. Amen. If you know Jesus Christ, we're going to be on top. Amen. So you need to know him. I ask you that this morning. Do you know him this morning? Do you know Jesus? And he, he, if you don't know him, he wants you to know him this morning. But he's the same God. You, and you may look at God, you may look at me and say, well, preacher, you just don't know what I'm going through right now. You don't know all the stuff that's going on in my life, and there just ain't nothing good in my life at all. That do like Brother C.T. Townsend said. Brother Dusty, praise him on credit. Amen. Listen, I understand there's days and there's weeks where it's on everything, nothing goes right. But I promise you this, you can praise him on credit, and one of these days, everything will go right, and you all be ahead. Amen? Amen? Just praise him on credit. Say, Lord, I'm going to praise you no matter what. And because of that, I, I can just about almost guarantee you that in the middle of your hard time, in the middle of the, the worst times of your life, you'll just start praising him. It'll turn things around. Amen? Right. It'll make things better. So we don't need to have our praises conditional because worship changes things. I'm going to show you that this morning, and I'm done. I'm already out of time. Acts chapter number 16, my favorite, one of my favorite stories of the Bible, one of my very favorite ones. I'll just paraphrase it. Paul and Silas have been on their missionary journey, and they have been wanting to go to a certain place, and they've been wanting to go up, up to a place, and the Holy Spirit kept calling to them in a, in at night and saying, no, I, don't, I need you to come over here to Macedonia. He obeyed the Holy Spirit, which is always a good thing. Whatever the Holy Spirit tells you to do, obey it. He went in there to Macedonia. Folks got saved. Went down there by the river and Lydia and all, and all those folks got saved. Paul began to preach. Paul began to see people saved. And then all of a sudden, here come the, the law, and they locked him up for preaching. He and Silas were locked up for preaching the gospel, for, see, for seeing folks get saved. And not only did they lock them up, but they put them in a maximum security prison. The Bible says they put them in the inner prison. That's the lowest of the low. That's the maximum security. But yet, in the middle of all that, they still worshiped. Amen. Let me say this. Number one, worship is not dictated by our circumstances. If anybody had a had an opportunity or a reason to be upset and to be down on themselves, it was Paul. Paul had done everything God had told him to do. He had obeyed the Holy Ghost. He had went there. He had saw folks saved. He got arrested and found himself in jail. And if I was anybody, if anybody had a reason to get pouty and get upset with God because things didn't go exactly like they ought to, thought it should have been, it was Paul because of where he ended up and what he was doing. But that ain't what Paul did. Paul didn't get upset and pouty about God because of his circumstances. Paul realized God had him there for a reason. Let me say something this morning. If you don't hear nothing else this preacher says this morning, wherever you are today, God has you there for a purpose. God has you there for a purpose. You did not end up there by accident. God has you there to get something done, to do something in your life, or to affect somebody else. Amen? And if you'll just say, God, I don't know why I'm here, and I don't even need to understand why I'm here, but I realize I'm here for a purpose, just show me what it is. Let me do it. God will use you this morning. Amen. God will change you and God will encourage you. The problem is so many times we want to give God 50 questions and ask, 
God, why am I here? This, how did I get here? God, what are you doing here? Listen, that's exactly what Abram could have done when God called out to Abraham. But he didn't do that. He just said, all right, God, I'm going to get up and go wherever you say to go. And God counted it unto him for righteousness. Amen. Listen, if we'll just obey and do and realize wherever we're at, God's got us there for a reason. God can use us in the middle of that. Amen. God saw uh, Paul and Silas there in that place, and they said, listen, we didn't buy, wind up here on accident. And they was beaten and bruised. They were, they'd been roughed up. But they saw an opportunity to worship. Your Bible says in Acts chapter number 16, verse number 25, in the middle of the maximum security prison, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And look at that last part. And the prisoners heard them. The prisoners heard them. You talking about going to camp meeting right there to a captive audience. They couldn't get away. Amen. Paul said there's so many around us now that need Jesus, that need the man that I've been preaching about. And they can't go nowhere. All they can do is hear. All they can do is hear us sing about how good God is. And they began to sing. But listen, just what if Paul would have let his circumstances keep him from praising? Nothing would have been done. We're going to show you what happened here in just a moment. But we can't let circumstances uh, dictate our worship because there's always circumstances. Uh, and, and listen, Paul knew this aforehand. Paul, in Acts chapter 9, God told Ananias to go tell Paul to, to, to speak to him, to pray over him, remove the scale from his eyes. And he said, I've got it. Paul's a chosen vessel, and I've got to show him all the things he's going to go through for me. And he showed him all the things he had to go through for him. He showed him all the beatings. He showed him all the imprisonments. He showed him all those things. But let me tell you what he also showed. He also showed him the glory. He also showed him the glory. And when he seen that glory, he says, the glory is worth all that i got to go through. Listen, he's worth it all this morning. Amen. He's worth your, co- he's worth your co-worker talking crazy about you and laughing at you because you go to church on Sunday morning. He, he, he's worth having people wonder, what in the world are, are you doing down there at the church house? Why are you acting so crazy? It's worth it, y'all, y'all because listen, when we really see who God is and what he's done for us, that, that praise just bursts forth. Worship anyway. They sang praises to God at midnight in the middle of the prison. So they did not let worship dictate... They did not let circumstances dictate their worship. Listen, number two, don't let worship be dictated by your feelings. Let me say this this morning. When we get in our feelings, they'll change a whole lot of what we do. And when we, if we come in, into the church house or we go anywhere in our feelings, upset about what God let us go through last week, upset about what we got ahead on our schedule this week, Ain't a whole lot of worship going to happen because we just ain't feeling it. But listen, Paul did not let his feelings stop his worship or dictate his worship. Uh, he could have truly said this, well, I just don't feel like worshiping. They just beat me with a cane or they just beat me with a whip. They got me chained up to the wall. I don't feel like worshiping. Now, let's all be good Christians this morning and be honest. How many of us ever showed up at church before and not felt like worshiping? Amen. My hand's the highest. Hey, some days I get up and I say, Lord, I just don't want to preach. Will you call somebody else? I'm serious. But listen, just because we don't feel like it does not mean we shouldn't do it. And, and that's not, that's not fake. I'm not saying fake it till you make it. I'm saying truly go in there no matter what you're feeling and say, Lord, I'm going to give all of myself to you today. I'm going to worship you whether I feel like it or not. I'm going to sing. I'm going to clap, and I'm going to give you glory. Even though everything's going bad, even though my feelings don't feel like doing that, I'm going to do that this morning. And let me tell you what God will do. He'll honor it. Amen. And he'll, his presence will just flow all over you. And then the, you know what that does? It changes your feelings real quick. Amen. It, it turns that frown upside down, as they say. <clears throat> he didn't let his feelings... Uh, dictate his worship. He didn't feel like worshiping, but he did. But the Bible says they sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them, and suddenly, listen what happened when they did that. 
And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. You want to shake your world up? Start praising God. Amen. Amen. Right. And immediately all the doors were opened. How many of y'all got some doors closed in your life that you want God to open? And I, listen, He is a God that can only open, that can open doors that nobody else can. How do I open them doors? How do I find the key to get the door open that I won't open? The Bible says when they sang and praised, when they sang and praised at midnight, God opened up some doors that they couldn't open themselves. Amen. Listen, they, they He flung open them prison doors. If you got some things in your life you want God to open up. Just start praising Him and asking God to do these things for you. He may open some doors that you could not open yourself. It says that not only that, but it, everyone's bands were loosed. Amen. How many of y'all got some chains this morning? Let's be honest. Who's got some chains this morning? I'm talking about chains of habits, of addictions, of things of that nature that you've been trying to get rid of, and you can't break them chains off. You've tried, you've tried real hard, but in our power, in our own self-will, we cannot do it. But how do we get chains broken off our our bodies and off our hands and how those things that's got us bound up. How do we get those things off? The Bible says when they just sang and praised God, He broke the chains off. So are you, I know what you're sitting there thinking. Oh, preacher, that's, that preacher's real good. But is it true? Why don't you try? Why don't you try? I've seen God do that in my own life. I can't tell you for you, but I can tell you for me. I can tell you what He's done for me. That's what the girl was doing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. I said, I can tell you what he's done for me. Right. Listen, he, he will break some things off of you that you can't break off yourself when you just submit and say, I'm going to worship no matter how I feel. I'm going to do no matter how I feel. Their bands were loose. Listen to this. And the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoner had been fled. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. And he called for a light and sprang in, and came in trembling, and fell down before Paul and Cyrus, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Let me tell you why you don't let your feelings and you don't let your circumstances dictate your worship of God. Because they may be somebody that's watching you that ain't got Jesus and needs to see Jesus in you. Listen, there may be somebody around you that's watching you, how you worship and how you go about your business that needs Jesus. This man, if Paul and Silas would have never sang out and praised God in that prison because of their circumstances or because of their feelings, this man would have never heard about Jesus and would have never came in and fell at their feet and said, what must I do to be saved? He wouldn't have got saved. If you go ahead and read the last part, his whole family ended up getting saved because of that. Because they all decided to praise. There may be somebody in your life that needs to see you praising God so they can see what you've got and say, that's what I want. That's what I've been missing in my life. So don't let our feelings dictate it. Number three, and I'm done. Worship can't be dictated for what God has done for us. And I've, I've, I've touched on this a lot before. But because of who he is. He's God. He's Jesus. Hey. He's Savior. He's our friend. And he died for us. That's all it takes. Listen, just because of who he is is enough for us to say, Lord, I want to praise you. Lord, I want to praise you. Listen, will you praise him? Will you let God speak to your heart? And turn loose and just let God, just let him flow. Maybe you need to change your circumstance this morning. Maybe it's you that needs to be changed this morning. You'll just let go and praise him. I promise you, God will change your situation. God will open some doors for you that cannot be opened anywhere else if you'll just turn loose and praise. Brother Tony, get ready for a song, whatever we're going to do for invitation this morning. I'm done. We're going to do a video this morning, okay? So we'll we'll watch that. Let me say this. As she's getting that booted up this morning. You got an opportunity right here. You got an opportunity right here to let God do something in your life. You got an opportunity to let all I just preached about happen right now. Listen, 
I don't know about this. I don't know about you this morning. This may not have helped you one bit, and you may have been thinking, man, I could have stayed at home and done a lot better off. But let me tell you who got some help this morning. If nobody else got some help, this one right here got some help. Amen. God's been good to me this morning. I'm thankful that I was here, and I felt the Spirit move. And I want us to just worship God and let God move. Listen, you may be that one here this morning that's never accepted Jesus. You've heard us talk about Jesus coming back, and that is a fact. He is coming back. You need to get saved. You need to come and allow and ask Jesus in your heart. The Bible says that if we'll just ask him, ask him to forgive us and to save us, the Bible says he will. If you'll come and do that this morning, you can be saved. Whatever the Lord's laid upon your heart, I want you to do it this morning. As we get ready to sing this video, and as we sing, I want you to worship. Lord, I come to you this day as humbly as we know how. Thank you for all that you've done. Lord, use this time of invitation. Lord, let, our, let us turn our hearts to you. Lord, let that one that may be here, or that two, or however many may be here without you this morning. Lord, don't let them walk out that door lost. Let them come to be saved before it's eternally too late. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you come this morning as we stand? Let's stand our feet. Mr. Cole's got this song queued up. If you listen to it, you worship this morning. Just let God flow over it. You need to be saved.
whose name is above his name is above depression his name is above loneliness oh his name is above disease his name is above cancer his name is above every other name this morning. Thank you for those moving and uh, just thank you for obeying the Lord. God's been good. Amen. Our hearts and minds clear this morning. what family does.
Amen. Run you down. I mean, no, so look, I want to know how to be saved. And I believe the prison of everything that's going on is belief. Amen. We don't have enough belief in it. We discussed it in Sunday school this morning for faith. And that's the prison that you're in. Why can't I make that move? Why can't I make that move? Because you don't believe. But us Christians have faith because of how we believe. Amen. That is huge. That's faith that takes every bit of it in the faith. Amen. This, my name's on the back of this little paper right here, amen. You can call me anytime, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about it, amen. But don't leave today if you're not saved. Anybody else this morning? All right, if not, we got to take care of some business, so at this time, <clears throat> I'm going to ask you to be seated. If you're here visiting and you're not a member of this church, you want to be dismissed at this time, you're welcome to, to be